Hi guys, welcome back. This is Match at 118, featuring my long-anticipated retrospective of one of the biggest and most ambitious computer role-playing games of all time, Bethesda's 1996 masterpiece, Daggerfall. And here we go. This is Daggerfall, the 1996 game uh, from Bethesda, the second in their Elder Scrolls series. It's also uh, interestingly re uh, released for DOS. Uh, this was 1996, so it's kind of an unusual uh, decision, seems to me. The upside is you can run it in DOSBox. Uh, the downside is it uses the resources very heavily. So, on top of having to emulate it with DOSBox, you're looking at a pretty sophisticated computer uh, to be able to run this. All right, so uh, the first decision you have to make is to select your race, uh, which amounts to where do you come from? You can see Dark Elves. There's lots to choose from here. Uh, you can read more about these in the manual. Uh, basically, this is going to give you certain bonuses and penalties, and like you might expect. Uh, the next step is to either pick a class from a list. You can make your own class, or you can answer a bunch of questions a la Ultima 4 uh, to get at that. Kind of an interesting setup here. I'm just going to go with the pre-made classes. You can see all of the different options here. Now, one nice thing about Daggerfall is uh, there's no you can do whatever you want to skill-wise. You could have a warrior casting spells. That's fine. Uh, mainly, what this affects is your leveling. So, if you pick a, uh, somebody that has axe and longsword and so on for skills, primary skills, those are what's going to be based on uh, when you try to level up. You have to gain uh, points on all those uh, different skills. So, you don't want to pick a class that has skills you'll never use. You know. Like Professor and Coitus or something. It's kind of funny, too, how uh, you'll see in a minute just how difficult this opening dungeon is. So it's easy to imagine a new player uh, going through all these questions. I mean, there's so much to do to create a character, and then you die <laughs> in a few seconds after spawning. Okay, so I've got my bard. Now I can uh, answer some more questions <laughs> to figure out your background. I kind of like this. It's... You get a bonus item if you choose an option here. And, you know, plus it's kind of fun just thinking about all this. Uh, no, none of those, by the way, are nicknames I was called as a child. Uh, I guess they couldn't print the <laughs> what I was called. Okay, there we go. A uh, certain degree of training. You know, I suppose this gives you some bonuses. Uh, now, since I'm a bard, I have a skill etiquette for interacting with nobles and uh, street smarts for interacting with uh, the lowbrow. <laughs> so let's try that. Uh, thieving skills. Uh, let's see. Pickpocketing, critical strikes. I've heard that pickpockets uh, do pretty well in this game, so I'll pick that. Uh, what motivates you? Fame, fun, knowledge, helping others. Who would pick helping others? Uh, what god, if any, do you worship? <laughs> oh, gods. <laughs> Look at all this. Uh, you you know, you'd have to spend some time with a manual or a table, I guess, to make intelligent decisions here. Uh, let's see. God of Mercy, that would probably be appropriate. Uh, let's pick that one, though. Uh, you had the most trouble resisting potions. Now, you see, all of these are negatives, uh, which is, I always like that. So, uh, the, the hero with the fatal flaw. And they all sound pretty bad. Um, I was getting killed constantly by uh, poisons a while ago. Uh, so you have saved a gold piece. Now, how do you say that that word? <laughs> what? Cur uh, I'm not even going to try. Uh, let's say I'd probably hold on to a book, maybe a good good copy of Dungeons and Desktops. Uh, you are friendlier than most with. Make the question stop! God damn it! Oh, okay. Uh, mischievous imps. Uh, yeah, sure. You are int <laughs> intimate. <laughs> oh boy, intimate friends with a mage. Well, maybe you I guess a warrior is a pretty good uh, guy to have as your buddy. All right, so we see there's been some reputation changes there. Interesting. Name thyself. You can tell they've been playing a little bit of Ultima. Ch choose thy face. Let's see. Does any of these uh, look like me? There. Uh, complexion's probably not right, but uh, okay. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. We're not done yet. You thought we were done. No, we have to roll and 
You can even save a roll. You know, it's like this is like the Cadillac of creating characters. <laughs> You've got all the options from all the different games. Everything's here to make your life more complicated, make you uh, micromanage the hell out of your character. I, you know, there's people that really study this. There must be a thousand websites dedicated to it. So if you really want to learn the best strategy, uh, fine. But you know me, I kind of like to go in. Uh, guns blazing. I, I think it's a little more interesting sometimes if you have a character with weird stats, not just the what you might expect. Stealth. Now, see, the primary skills, those, those are what I have to focus on leveling, but also major skills count a little bit, too. Uh, the only ones that don't count towards leveling are something called miscellaneous, which will basically be everything else. But look at all the frickin' skills. Uh, <laughs> geez, I mean, this is a very sophisticated game. I think I might have mentioned that already. Okay, so we're good to go. Let's start the story. 400 years after Tiber Septim's reign, the beginning will meet the end and the bloody circle will close at the Empire of Camriel. The unworthy heirs of the Septim dynasty have allowed... You know, it's kind of funny that they going on so much about the story here, because even in the manual, they basically say the game has no story, or <laughs> does it really matter? They don't care about the story either. Uh, but I guess they felt like it would just be too uh, too upsetting or too off-putting if there was nothing here at the beginning. But let's uh, skip ahead a little here, and you can see the, well, the live actors. <laughs> I guess that was still a big deal in 1996. <laughs> Excuse the gloom, but none may know of this meeting. Also saves on backgrounds. The nature of my trouble is darker still. Over a year ago, King Lysandus of Daggerfall died honorably on the field of battle. He was as loyal a subject, ally, and friend as you are. I did grieve for him, but his spirit does not rest. With a spectral army, he haunts his former kingdom, crying for revenge. I do not know why a good and loyal man would be so cursed. Perhaps you can find the answer. Who, me? And close the marble jaws of oblivion, bringing peace to his soul. I ask this as your emperor and your friend. I have one lesser request. No, I won't be your friend on Facebook. Several years ago, I wrote a letter to the Queen of Daggerfall. It never arrived. Goddamn postal service. The letter was of a sentimental and personal nature. Told you that photo was a bad idea. If you find and destroy that letter, I will be grateful. Now, my champion. Hey, this is getting heavy. Rest well this night. Who the hell is that guy? For tomorrow, you sail for the kingdom of Daggerfall. Well, I guess the Navy turns out to be just as bad as the Postal Service. We are wrecked. Stuck in a dungeon, <laughs> conveniently shipwrecked in a starter dungeon. <laughs> uh, I say starter dungeon, though, loosely, because this thing is a bitch, as you will soon see. Uh, but anyway, you could read this text if you're so inclined. Uh, tutorial mode! <laughs> Don't need no stinking tutorial. Okay, here we go, here we go. Point me towards the rats! Okay, this interface is going to take some getting used to. <laughs> oh, that's an understatement. Just imagine yourself like an Olympic athlete, and then imagine yourself as the opposite. <laughs> that's how it feels like to move around in this game. Okay, there's my character. Oh, he doesn't look too bad. I need to equip this ebony dagger. See, I got that because I answered the questions. And I'm going to need it to kill this imp coming up. 
I just uh, cast a spell. If you've played any of the other Elder Scrolls games, you know you have to cast spells to be able to raise the skill. doesn't even matter if they serve absolutely no purpose. Uh, I guess you could argue that the slow fall spell might come in handy in case I trip over myself trying to navigate this son of a gun. Okay, the, the little trick here is that the first door is a secret door that looks like a wall. <laughs> Thank you, Bethesda! Um... It's got me all turned around. Well, let me get back there. So I just click on the wall, and there we go. Now, it's, it's my understanding that the other dungeons are randomly generated, or procedurally generated, uh, but not this first one. Oh, I think I saw a rat. <laughs> I can't wait to kill that rat with my knife. <laughs> Have you ever tried to kill a rat with a knife? Oh, he's dead. Body has no treasure. What, not even a little piece of cheese? Oh, I think I see some... Yeah, there's some gold. Or is that chicken nuggets? Something over here. Okay, you got some gold pieces. Got a map. That's pretty cool. First time I've seen that. Location of ruins of the Hawking Farmstead. So that's not going to come in handy for quite a while. I keep getting these ingredients, too. I assume they have something to do with potions. <laughs> I haven't gotten to a point where I'm using potions yet. But I'll go ahead and take the ingredients. Now let me see if I can uh, figure out which way to go here. Unfortunately, there is this rather uh, nice map. It's quite an impressive map. It's got a top-down view and a sort of slanted view. You can scoot it all around, move it. Um, and it generates this automatically, uh, which is quite nice, quite a handy feature, although the, there's so many different levels and uh, the, the designs that these uh, algorithms spit out are complicated enough that <laughs> you get pretty much just as lost <laughs> looking at the map. Uh, but it is nice to have it. You know, you would never see a dungeon, a starter dungeon like this in a modern game. <laughs> it's sudden death er around every corner. Any of these guys could, any of these uh, creatures could just kill you, and you'd have to start from a save point. It doesn't even automatically save, so you really have to stay on top of it. Uh, resting is the only way to heal. And you can only rest if there's no monsters around, so that's another way to get into an un unwinnable state. Now this little imp here, he has killed about 50 of my starting characters. <laughs> uh, the deal is you can only kill him with this ebony dagger, or a weapon of sufficient quality. So if you didn't get the dagger, uh, you might have no way to kill him, and his spells will just mow you down. Now look at that, one gold piece. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Now this is a trick too. The 3D or whatever you want to call it is not very good in this game, and you have to click just right to be able to get the loot. <laughs> you know, an hour later. Oh, uh, there we go. That's what they mean by hardcore. <laughs> okay, looks like the imp is gone. There's a lot uh, to this game that you know, I've, I've been playing it for a couple of days. I'm definitely not an expert. I think I should mention that <laughs> periodically. Uh, there's probably all sorts of stuff that I'm missing. I believe I saw a television commercial the other day for a Daggerfall Institute uh, where you can learn all the different aspects of this game. Just trying out some of my different maneuvers here. I was reading in the manual that each one, I think there's six or maybe nine different moves you can make, and they have uh, their penalties and advantages. I never bothered to learn them. <laughs> Just swipe <laughs> and hope to God I can connect before these monsters kill me. Uh, you don't have a lot of time to think about it in the in the heat of battle. I'll say one thing about this game that I really like is these dungeons have the perfect ambiance. <laughs> you know, I mean they really do seem uh, mysterious and eerie. And since you can die, you, you know you can die just in, in a flash. So that really adds to the, your anxiety as you're creeping around. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. Like here we have an archer. Now fortunately for me, she doesn't seem to be able to get over this table. <laughs> I guess you can still whack me. Uh, you could be an archer too. I haven't uh, tried that yet. I don't know if I could really see myself in that sexy little outfit, but... Maybe it'll look different on me. Oh, she had quite a bit of stuff. A mace. Dagger. Looks like some more chicken nuggets there. Now here's the armor. I'm finally getting some armor. Now you see those numbers? The zeros around my character there? That's the armor class on that particular body part. 
As you can see, there's quite a few different parts you can arm or armor. I mean, most people probably don't even know what a pauldron or a greave is. My other character, I was able to find a black Russian cod piece that came in quite handy on a number of occasions. Uh, but you do have uh, class restrictions. Since I'm a bard, I'm not, not really sure. I guess I could pro I'm probably limited to leather. I'll need to rest in a minute. That's the way to uh, gain skills and level up, by the way. You have to rest for six hours. Okay, here we have some more rats. <laughs> it's just, this place is infested with these guys. I don't know what it is about computer role-playing game designers and their love of rats. And this place has more rats than Pizza Hut. Okay, let's see what we've got out here. I need to find a, a rest stop. Let's go ahead and do that, and you can see the what it looks like to gain some skill points. Sometimes finding ones, like looking for an unopened box of elf ears at BlizzCon. What's in? Oh, we got a bear. <laughs> it's a grizzly. <laughs> now, how the hell did this bear? get into this room in this dungeon <laughs> what does it eat how does it survive uh oh, that's, <laughs> I'm not supposed to ask those kind of questions <laughs> man there's still enemies nearby i should mention too uh one thing another thing i like is the sound effects that you hear from the monsters in the game sometimes you don't know exactly where they are but you keep hearing them and that can definitely add to the uh, to the fun, kind of uh, like Dungeon Master back in the day. All given told, it will probably take you a couple hours at, at bare minimum uh, to get out of this starter dungeon, unless you're just really lucky or you know the dungeon really well. Okay, there we finally got some uh, rest in. Ten hours to heal. You notice there I've improved some skills. As we're waiting for that cake to bake, let's go to this one I completed earlier. This is still just in the early stages of the game, but I got out of the dungeon and went to a town. Now there is a... I don't know how many... There's some ungodly number of these towns on the map. I mean, it's a huge, huge game world. It is procedurally generated, kind of like old Elite was back in the day, so... Don't get too excited. But when you're starting out, all of this seems fresh and new. And well worth exploring. It'll take you a while before you start to see the strings, <laughs> so to speak. Like Ultima and other games of that ilk, you do need to talk to people to get information. If you, uh, you notice I've got options for tone. Now if it's a, if it's a noble, I'm supposed to use the polite, and that uses my etiquette skill. If it's a commoner, I use blunt, and that uses my street smart skill. But the idea is to try to figure out what's going on, is there any news, is there a job? If I'm looking for a residence, uh, they can help me with that too. So it's definitely worth the time to uh, talk to people and try to get information this way. <laughs> Just don't expect uh, any uh, fascinating philosophical discussions with these guys. <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> well, he's looking a little flat. <laughs> Do I want to know why he's got that expression on his face? Maybe I should just get away from him. <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> Okay, what is, uh, what's going on over here? You know, somehow going to taverns in games is just never as fun as going to <laughs> actual taverns. <laughs> uh, you know, trying to move around in this, <laughs> this tavern reminds me of similar troubles I've had in actual taverns. I mean, this takes some getting used to. Let's see if I can get a couple of pints might actually help things. I think there's a merchant skill too, so you might be able to get cheaper prices. What the f Oh man, I can't even get a beer in this game. Let's get out of here. Okay, a couple hours and a couple shots of Jaeger later, I am here. Actually, where am I? Okay, <laughs> let me back up a bit. So I joined a fighter's guild, and they gave me a quest to come to this town. It's a few hundred miles away. Apparently, a bear or cat, they're not sure which, has broken into this house. And I have to, of course, kill it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, she doesn't look so good up close. 
Look, lady, you got a saber-toothed tiger running around your house, and you're just chilling all sexy by that pipe organ. What the hell? Oh! <laughs> I did that to my girlfriend's cat one time, and <laughs> she, she didn't give me no reward either. You know, I hope I'm not making this game look bad, because I actually do uh, quite enjoy this. I looked at some of the contemporary reviews, and they were kind of divided, it seemed like. Some people uh, thought it was just an amazing achievement. They likened it to uh, the quake of CRPGs, I think I saw in one review. But they really liked the size of the game world. They didn't care that it was just all a bunch of algorithms. Uh, but other people, though, slammed it for that very same reason. They felt like they were just sort of cast adrift in this game world without any real purpose. Uh, so I guess it just depends on what you like in a role-playing game. But for my part, I really appreciate... What the... <laughs> okay. What is that? Okay. But anyway, as uh, for my part, I really appreciate what uh, Bethesda's done here. I think it's neat. It's really awesome if you think that basically this whole universe has been created solely for your enjoyment. And no two playthroughs will ever be the same, so... Hell of a lot to offer here. Elder Scrolls Daggerfall. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a new interview series, this time with Josh Mandel of Sierra. A lot of great stories about his adventure games, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I want to thank everyone who has been so generously donating and supporting this show. It really means a lot to me, guys. If you haven't, if you haven't donated in the past... Uh, look at the show notes. I'll have some links there for you. Or if you want to donate again, that's fine, too. It's really appreciated and very, very helpful. So thanks again. And as always, I want to leave you with a quotation. And this, this uh, quotation I thought was uh, particularly uh, relevant uh, given the subject of uh, the retrospective. And it goes something like this. Experience is the teacher of all things. Said by a certain Julius Caesar. <laughs> See you guys next week. Would it be appropriate to laugh? I've got a new one I'd like to try.